Hi, I'm Ashi Shera, the Sample Prep Sales Manager for North America at Phenomenex. Hi, my name is Matt Brucius. I'm the Product Manager for Sample Prep at Phenomenex. And you're watching an episode of Sample Prep Confessions. Matt, why do labs do SBE? Uh, well, Ashi, uh, labs perform SBE for a variety of reasons. Uh, first and foremost, uh, typically to clean up your sample of interest. So uh, what that will affect is your uh, downstream analysis, so improving your chromatography. Um, also, reducing the amount of junk that you're putting on your instrument, so uh, potentially reducing the amount of uh, system maintenance required. So, uh, cleaning up your sample in general is the first reason why people would perform solid phase extraction. Uh, the second reason is really to concentrate up your analytes of interest. So, um, it, I guess the, the easiest way to describe that would be if you're trying to hit low limits of detection, low limits of quantitation, you want a more concentrated sample to be able to do that. The benefit of that is uh, maybe being able to maximize the lifetime of an older instrument in the lab by performing solid phase extraction up front. And the final reason why uh, folks would perform solid phase extraction is to solvent switch. So if you are working with an aqueous based sample and you would like to inject on a GC instrument, uh, maybe going from uh, you know, your, your aqueous based sample into a volatile organic is a way to do that by performing SPE. Hmm. Okay, so what are the steps involved in SPE? So SBE kind of works by the moniker of catch and release. Okay. It's more than two steps though, so it's typically five steps in traditional SBE. Okay. Uh, two steps would be, the first two steps would be conditioning and equilibrating. You're really just priming the cartridge, getting it ready to accept your analyte of interest. Uh, loading your sample on, so that's the catching part of it. Right. And then we'll wash away the interferences, that's step four. Okay. The final step is the elution, so the releasing part of it. So catch and release, five okay. steps, typically. Five steps, got it. What are the advantages of SPE? So there are a couple of advantages of performing solid phase extraction. Uh, the first advantage, um, unlike other techniques, you are able to specifically target analytes of interest. So uh, I guess in contrast to something like a liquid-liquid example, where you, a liquid-liquid extraction, we are just targeting classes of compounds. With SPE, you can specifically target your analyte of interest, whether it's a quaternary amine or you know, a tertiary amine, for example. Uh, being able to specifically target these analytes is what's going to lead to a much cleaner sample relative to liquid-liquid uh, extraction, uh, for example. Um, another benefit of performing SPE is the ability to batch process samples. So because you're working in a fixed 96 well plate or uh, cartridges on top of a vacuum manifold, for example, you are able to uh, batch process and more easily automate your, your workflow, again, in contrast to something like liquid-liquid extraction. Um, and uh, to poke fun at liquid-liquid one more time, uh, SPE actually concentrates your analytes of interest as a function of just performing the technique. So uh, we might start off with one mil of urine and then we're looting off with 200 microliters of organic solvent. Typically with something like liquid-liquid, you're usually having to use three or four times the amount of organic right. solvent just to extract your analyte uh, from your sample in general. So uh, concentration, batch process, cleaner samples. Cool. So that makes sense. Can you show us? I'd love to. Yay! Okay, so this is the infamous SPE dye demo. We're going to start off by conditioning our sorbent with uh, a strong organic solvent. In this particular case, it'll be methanol. Uh, so uh, for this particular bed mass of SP cartridge, which is a C18 cartridge, I'm going to condition with uh, 600 microliters of methanol. Uh, so I'm going to load it onto the cartridge. Uh, because I'm doing this in a manual fashion, I'm going to use an adapter cap and syringe barrel to actually push the solvent through the SPE bed. Uh, typically, flow rate is very important for uh, the loading step and the elution step. For this particular step, it's not as important. Uh, so we're shooting for about five or six mils a minute. I'm gonna undershoot it by a little bit just to be, just sort of to be safe. Uh, but you'll notice what is five or six mils a minute, about five or six drops per second. So that's a good way to estimate how fast your flow rate is when you're just looking at the SPE cartridges. So um, you'll notice I brought the uh, solvent down, a little bit difficult to see, but brought the solvent down to just the meniscus is at the top of the top frit. The next step is gonna be uh, the equilibration step. So I'm gonna be flushing out most, but not all of the methanol with some water. So again, I'm gonna pipette about 600 microliters of water onto the SPE cartridge. 
apply my adapter cap and push at about the same flow rate. So we're talking again about five or six mils a minute. Um, the whole purpose here is that we want to get the C18 cartridge in this particular case um, ready in uh, you know, ready in conditions that it can accept our analyte of interest. Uh, if we were to load without doing the equilibration buffer, nothing would stick and it would all fly through. Um, so we're finally ready to load our sample in this particular case. It is the uh, yellow and blue dye that we've so eloquently mixed together to make green. Uh, so we're going to take the green dye and we're going to load it onto our SPE cartridge and the goal here being to fractionate out uh, both of these colors again. Uh, so going from blue and yellow to green and then back to blue and yellow with a slight twist. We're going to load our sample onto the SPE cartridge and again flow rate is very critical in this particular step so we want to be sure that we're aiming for one to two mils per minute or a drop or two per second so we're going to be real careful with how slowly we're doing this just so we don't embarrass ourselves on this wonderful video you'll notice that there is a really tight blue band that is starting to form at the top of the cartridge and that's a good indication that we condition the cartridge appropriately um, and you'll notice that the yellow dye is actually passing pretty much straight through the yellow dye is much more polar than the blue dye and so it passes through the SPE cartridge. You'll notice there's also a, a faint hint of red that is starting to develop below the blue band. Moving on to the next step, uh, we're going to wash away the residual yellow solvent that may be stuck behind in the SPE cartridge. And what's actually neat here is we're going to increase uh, for our first wash solvent, it's going to be 5% organic solvent. So um, what this does, it's a little bit stronger than the conditions that we just loaded in. So hopefully it will be strong enough to, just, to get rid of the residual yellow. Hopefully the residual, uh, this kind of red color that's starting to develop as well without actually losing the blue dye as well. So you'll see, it starts coming off pretty nice. We have a first drop of yellow, and then we start to actually get the red dye that comes off of here. Uh, maybe you're asking where did the red dye come from, and really just the manufacturer probably added a little bit of red dye to make the yellow look less yellow, if that makes sense. So um, at this point, we've washed away the interferences in this particular application, and we're gonna move on to our elution step. So we're gonna up our game from 5% organic solvent um, to 100% methanol, and uh, effectively release our analyte of interest in this particular case, if you can kind of imagine the scenario where um, we wanted to analyze the blue dye without the presence of the yellow. We've washed away the interference that's yellow, and now we're going to very slowly elute off our blue dye of interest. So. Again, flow rate is very critical here. And when you uh, loading and eluding is uh, very critical to be slow is safe is um, kind of the general uh, thing we live by. So about a drop or two per second um, in this particular case is good enough. And you'll notice that the blue dye is, uh, you know, kind of uh, hitting the bottom of the scintillation vial pretty nicely there. And we have effectively washed off all of the blue dye. So there we go, we have fractionated out the blue dye away from the yellow dye and then also found out that there was a little bit of red dye that was present in the initial starting condition and there's that wash solvent in the back. Voila! For more information, click on the link below. I'm Ashi Shara, the Sample Pep Sales Manager at Phenomenex. And I'm Matt Brusius, the product manager at Phenomenex. Thanks for watching Sample Prep Confessions.